y'all, we got a ton of sunscreen to go through, so let go. We're gonna be going through both mineral and chemical sunscreens in this video. Everything is gonna be linked in the description, so if you want more information or you're looking to purchase, it's gonna be in the description. And as always, timestamps will also be listed below. Now, one thing I'm gonna need to remind you is that chemical doesn't mean bad. It doesn't necessarily need to mean bad. Everything is made out of chemicals, from the air we breathe, to the water we drink, to our braids, our eyelashes, our skin, <laughs> the shirts that we got on, everything is made out of chemicals. And on the other hand, mineral doesn't always mean better. Now, me, myself, personally, I wear chemical sunscreens. I do the mineral sunscreen reviews because mineral sunscreens have a tendency to look terrible on deeper skin, with the exception of a few. So I like to help guide y'all through that because the ultimate goal is that everybody need to be putting some sunscreen on your bumble clot skin. <laughs> now let's get into these reviews. First up, the Beauty of Joycin Sun Relief SPF 50 with a PA of four pluses. So PA rating, which is not standardized all over the world. Some brands have it, some brands don't, but a PA of four pluses is gonna mean that this has very high UVA coverage, which basically means it's protecting you from the UVA rays. The UVA rays are known to age the skin prematurely, and it also is known to worsen dark spots. The filters in here, Juvenal A+, Juvenal T150, Tinosorb M, Diethylhexyl Butamido, <laughs> Triazone, <laughs> which sounds like a lot like a Harry Potter spell. <laughs> if you wanna learn a little bit more about those filters, now filters are what they put into a product to help protect you from the sun. These are filters that we can't use in the US, not because they bad, because you know, the US a little bit on the slow vibe when it comes to putting in new materials in our sunscreens. But if you wanna learn more about these, I'll leave a link to Inky Decoder site in the description so you can read up a little bit more. Now, this was creamy, but lightweight. I found that it moisturizes really well, but I would say that this is more of a cold temperature sunscreen for me. I have oily skin. I live in a region where we get four seasons. This probably wouldn't cut it for me when it gets it's warmer out. So have you tried this? Would you try it? Let me know in the comments. Next up, the Inky List Polyglutamic Acid Dewy Sunscreen SBF 30. The UV filters in here, octocrylene, avobenzone, octosalate, and enzulazole. Now I did to get to try this a little bit earlier before it came out through a campaign that I did with Inky List. And if you're wondering like, what the heck is polyglutamic acid? So polyglutamic acid is a humectant, you know, humectants hydrate, that's capable of holding onto water within the skin and on its surface. Last time, they came out with something. It was the succinic acid, succinic acid acne treatment, which I really loved. Also did a campaign with that. But Inky was kind of not quite sure if that's the case with polyglutamic acid. Can I say they have a history? They have in the past have used ingredients that you probably wouldn't hear of that often. So you're like, ooh, that's new, you know. And then it's usually some other long-standing ingredient that's actually doing the legwork for the product. Not saying that's what the case is here, but it's possible. Me, I. I don't care because like if the product works, the product works. And I actually really like this. Despite the fact that this says dewy sunscreen, I did find that it was like a controlled dew. Cause you know, if you have oily skin and you hear something that's called dewy, you're like, oh no, I'm about to be looking like Jermaine Jackson up in this bitch. But <laughs> this was a controlled dew. Might not necessarily be the first thing I would reach for in the summertime with oily skin. But you know, as the temperature is pretty moderate right now, and maybe even in some parts of the winter, this could be be your girl with oily skin. And of course, you know, I talk about oily skin because I have oily skin, but if you have dry skin, you know, this probably would be your girl during the summer months. So would you try this? Have you tried this? Let me know in the comments. Next up is Crave Beauty's Beat the Sun. This is an SPF 40 and it has a PA of three pluses. Remember we talked about the PA rating earlier. It denotes the UVA protection that you're gonna get. A PA of three pluses means high protection. Whereas we talked about earlier, the four plus means very high protection. And again, I gotta say, it's not that this is a bad thing, it's just that, you know, the FDA, they, they little on the slow bop when it comes to adding in UV filters, you know, ones that could be a little bit better than the ones we got, but you know. So the previous product could not be called a sunscreen because of US regulations. However, they have reformulated and they are using filters that are approved in the US and the filters here are homosalate, octosalate, avobenzone, and octocrylene. So I like this, it's a light low 
lotion. It does leave a slight sheen on your face, which I really liked. Like if I'm just gonna be wearing my bare skin, wearing my bare skin, you know what I mean? However, the, the sheen might be a little bit too much when you're wearing makeup depending on the look you're going for. If you're going for a look that's very dewy and luminous, that kind of look, then it probably wouldn't be a big deal for you. However, if you're somebody with oily skin like me and you're wearing this with makeup and it happens to be hot out, it may not necessarily be, you know, a good combination. Would you try this? Have you tried this? Let me know in the comments. Next up, the Black Girl Sunscreen Make It pop <laughs> SBF 50 lip gloss. So the filters in here, octocrylene, octosalate, homosalate, and avabenzone. As you know, every inch of skin can be affected by the sun, including our lips. However, there aren't a great many amount of sun protection products out there for the lips. Although in a video that I did with a dermatologist back in 2020, you know, going into the, the crates there with the 2020 content. From what I understand, uh, some matte lipsticks can offer you some protection from the sun because matte lipsticks will contain iron oxides and because of the finish it can help to give your lips some protection from the sun for more on that though make sure you check out that video i thought this was nice it smells like vanilla which vanilla is like one of my favorite scents it does have a nice shine to it so you know days where you're not looking to do the most you just want to slap this on it's very you know very easy to slap in your purse and you can reapply as needed which you're gonna need because i would say if anywhere that you're gonna need to keep reapplying sunscreen on your body. It is gonna definitely be your lips and your hands, cause you know, you, you, you're talking and you're eating and stuff and then you're washing your hands and whatnot. The sunscreen is more likely to come off on those areas than others. Now I will say though, it's, it's a thicker gloss, which is nice, but sometimes there was something in it that made my lips tingle. Sometimes I was fine and sometimes I felt like a little tingle. So I don't know if that was like a me thing or, you know, maybe other people have, <laughs> have noticed that. If you've noticed it, let me know in the comments. But either way, would you try this? Let me know in the comments. Now, next up, another new product from Black Girl Sunscreen. It is the Make It Glow Sunscreen Spray SPF 30. The filters in here have a benzone, homosalate, octosalate, octocrylene. Now, unfortunately, I thought this was closed. I'm pretty sure it was closed because I don't remember actually getting to use this when I went on a recent trip. I think I used um, a different sunscreen spray. So there sh it shouldn't have been open. However, I don't know, somehow it wound up spilling all up in my suitcase, messed up a couple things. So there's actually not even a drop of product left in here for me to demo this for you, but it's a sunscreen spray. It's not gonna look any different than any other sunscreen sprays that you've probably already tried. I've tried a ton of sunscreen sprays and I didn't really see any difference here between this one and others. The make it glow part though, I guess it's just like the name because there's not like any kind of shimmery or luminous kind of like attributes to the sunscreen spray that will make it glow. But this is a very nice and tidy product that you can kind of stick in your bag as long as, you know, it's properly closed. I don't know if maybe I had mine open or if there's like a fault in the packaging, I don't know. But theoretically, it is something that's really nice. You can just throw it in your bag and take it out to reapply your sunscreen throughout the day. Now with a spray, as I always gotta remind you, you can spray it on your body. You must rub it in with your hands because if you spray it on your body, some of the spray is getting on you, some of it's getting here, and some of it's not getting here, some of it's in the atmosphere. So you wanna rub it in with your hands to make sure that you properly apply it to your skin, or you can spray it in your hand and then rub it into your skin to make sure that you, you know, you're getting all the crevices and everything like that. Now I will say this was $15.99 for this three ounce bottle. A little on the pricey side for me, cause I would just get a big old bottle of like whatever, like Target or Walgreens or CVS brand sunscreen spray for like half the price for maybe even double the product but you know would you try this have you tried this let me know in the comments next up the round lab birch juice moisturizing sunscreen spf 50 plus with a pa of four pluses the uv filters in here uvenil a plus uvenil t150 and tinasorb m so this is a very thick and creamy formulation however it does feel lightweight it's very hydrating on the skin which is a plus and i also found it to be very weightless See, I like a nice, you know, you take like a nice big thick 
sunscreen and you know it feels thick and so this sunscreen it comes out thick and creamy but then you massage it in and it feels absolutely weightless and it feels very hydrating on the skin this is something that could work for quite a number of different skin types during different times of the year like i found that this was good enough for now and i feel like this would also be good enough for me when the weather starts to get even warmer so I like it. Would you try it? Have you tried it? Let me know in the comments. Next up, the Trader Joe's Daily Sunscreen SPF 45. So this is a clear sunscreen that can be thought of as a dupe for the Supergoop Unseen Sunscreen. However, this is a fraction of the price at $8.99. The only downside with this is that you have to go to a Trader Joe's location to buy it. And then sometimes they don't have it. Like when it first came out, people were buying it off the shelves and it took them a while to restock and then they finally restocked. And I didn't even buy it as a friend of mine got it for me because she knew I was looking forward to like do a review for you guys. But anyway, the filters in here, avabenzone, homosalate, octosalate, and octocrylene. So this is a little more fluid than the unseen sunscreen. The unseen sunscreen tends to feel more like a gel. This is a little bit more fluid than that. And I would say that another sunscreen that this might be compared to is a black girl sunscreen, make it clear. Is it called make it clear? I believe it is. That black girl sunscreen, make it clear, I like. This one is not as fluid as the black Black Girl sunscreen make it clear and not as oily feeling. It feels silky smooth on the skin. It has a natural finish. It's not matte, it's not shiny either. However, with a sunscreen like this, you do have to be mindful of what you use underneath because unfortunately in skincare, different textures and whatnot, things aren't always going to play nicely. So just keep that in mind. You might need to either let things completely dry before you put the sunscreen on so that you can avoid any of that pilling or maybe apply something that's similar in texture because you're going to need to apply a moisturizer on before a sunscreen like this. So maybe something that's similar in texture and then you put this on. Anyway, would you try this? Have you tried this? Let me know in the comments. Next up, the Sone Ray See Clearly SPF 30 sunscreen face and body gel. So the UV filters in here are homosalate, octocrylene, octosalate, and avabenzone. So this is a gel sunscreen, but it has a very loose, slippery texture, and it feels and looks just greasy on the skin. And you know, like that, it's, it's really greasy. It's not for me, definitely not in the summertime, and I can't even see me wearing this in the dead of winter but this might be better suited for you if you have drier skin so you know not all is lost here would you try this have you tried this let me know in the comments next up the skin aqua next to shield serum uv milk this is an spf 50 plus with a pa of four pluses the filters in here tinasorb s uvenol t150 tinasorb m uvenol a plus and titanium dioxide so this was very lightweight yet hydrating like some asian sunscreens it does use alcohol to kind of give it that really light feeling which for me is fine for some people I know they like to you guys like to avoid the alcohol because maybe you have a little sensitivity to it so just keep that in mind this has a natural finish it feels like there's nothing on the skin however you might see like like I felt like I saw like a like a little of a cast. Nothing where like people would be like, oh girl, what happened to your face? But just like a little something that I'm sure is coming from the titanium dioxide that's in here and maybe a little bit of the Tinasorb M because the Tinasorb M is a kind of hybrid, but it does have some inorganic mineral filters in there. Anyway, would you try this? Have you tried this? Let me know in the comments. Next up, the Coats Flawless Complexion SPF 50 Richly Tinted Sunscreen. So the UV filter in here is zinc oxide, making this 100% mineral sunscreen and it's got some iron oxides which we have learned before iron oxides help to protect the skin from visible light visible light which comes from the Sun it can also come from our devices but you know most importantly it comes from the Sun and it is something that can worsen pigmentation so having a tinted sunscreen can be quite beneficial in some circumstances now when you put this out the, the, the tint look very pasty I was just like oh what the heck is this coats however I've tried another regular coats mineral sunscreen tinted mineral sunscreen sunscreen before and that was nice however this is really nice <laughs> like really nice like don't let that first applicate like when it comes out don't let that 
like trick you into being like, oh, this is gonna be nasty. But it really looks really nice on the skin. Now, you know, how it looks on everyone can vary. If you have a deeper complexion than mine, you know, maybe the rich tint is not richly tinted enough for you, but it, it, may, it, might, it might look better than some of the other mineral sunscreens you've probably tried before. Have you tried this? Would you try this? Let me know in the comments. Next up, the Supergroup Glow Screen SPF 40, which has a PA of three pluses. Now they recently came out with two additional shades in Glow Screen. I picked up the one in Sunset, which is the deepest shade. Now this ain't gonna be for everybody, but one thing that I do enjoy about Supergoop, they gonna make you a sunscreen. They gonna try and make a sunscreen for everybody, for every situation and, and every look, they are gonna try and make a sunscreen for that. And I appreciate that because, you know, not everybody wants the same thing out of a sunscreen. So the filters in here, avabenzone, octosalate, and octocrylene, it does have iron oxides in here as well. So this is more of a glistening sheen look on the skin than it is a bunch of glitter, which to me, you know, there's a time and a place I would prefer glitter on my body, not so much on my face. So I did appreciate that this had like a nice sheen. Like you can tell you have a little something on, like your skin looks great, but it's not like a bunch of glitter. Now on my skin tone, you can see a glow, but you're not gonna see much color because my skin is deeper than the tint. If you're lighter than me, you probably will see more of a tint on your skin. Now for me, myself personally, because this does have that really nice glistening, glowy type of finish to it, it is tinted. I didn't wanna put this on my ears or on my neck and chest because I just had a feeling like, you know, I've got braids, so then the braids are gonna rub on the ears and then that's gonna get on my clothes. Or, you know, if I put it on my neck and chest, that that could rub against my clothes and just make like a whole mess. So with this, I put my regular body sunscreen on my ears, neck and chest, and then I just put this on my face. That could be a good thing and a bad thing. Cause it's like, you know, super group stuff is a little bit on the pricier side. So, you know, only using it on the face kind of makes it stretch a little bit, but it's up to you. You could go and put this on your ears and bring it all down to your neck and whatnot. If you have something that you don't mind it getting a little bit, you know, of the product on it, you know, whatever. And I also like that although it had a sheen, it didn't look greasy. However, I do think that wearing this in the summertime, I would probably need to touch up throughout the day, which I'm gonna show you a product that they might have had in mind for, for for this to go together, you know, but we'll talk about that in a second. But for now, would you try this? Have you tried this? Let me know in the comments. So as you might have guessed, next up is the Supergoop Glow Setting Mineral Powder SPF 35. The filter in here, zinc oxide, so 100% mineral. Now this is a gold shimmery version of their other resetting mineral powder. The other resetting mineral powder is one of my staples, mostly because it's the only one that's out there that it's in a good packaging where the powder is not all over the place and whatnot. So you can reapply sunscreen when you're wearing makeup. Now this one though, not for me because there's a lot of gold shimmer in here. There's a time and a place and a certain person that this might be right for. It ain't me, <laughs> it might be you. And if it is you, let me know in the comments because I'd love to know who would love something like this. So let me know, get all chitty chatty and let's move on. Next up, the Good Molecules Sheer Mineral Sunscreen SPF 30. I've been trying to mineral sunscreens on this channel for at least the last three years for you guys. And a lot of you guys look for something that's affordable and Sadly, a lot of the nicer ones do tend to be a little bit pricey, but I'm happy to say this one's $12. It's 1.7 fluid ounces. $12 still may feel like a lot, but in comparison to a lot of other mineral sunscreens that look good on deeper skin, this is probably one of the best prices I have seen thus far. You know, I'll have a long, well, we'll talk about my list later in the end of this video. So with this one, it has a satin finish. There is a cast, but the cast is not that bad. It's like you would have to be hard pressed to clock a cast on this, on my complexion at least. If you're deeper than me, the cast might be a little bit more clockable, but I think that they did a decent job with this sunscreen with the cast. However, cast gon' cast. Cause as I've told y'all before many, many times that mineral sunscreens are made with either zinc oxide and or titanium dioxide, both of which are white pigment. You know what I'm saying? You know what you gotta do you to, to try to make a white pigment look less white pigmenty on darker skin. You either have to make the particles much smaller. You either put a bunch of like emollients in it so that it glides on the skin better, or you can tint it. Those are a couple of ways that you can make a mineral sunscreen look better on deeper skin. Now my skin did feel a little ball me, a little, little like, you know, like you could like when you touch the skin, it feels like I have on like all of the makeup right now and I can touch my skin and I don't, I feel my skin. I don't feel like tons of makeup. 
When I put this on, it did feel very balmy and tacky to the touch, even after it like dried down. So that's one thing to consider. But other than that, I think this is a pretty decent mineral sunscreen. Would you try it? Have you tried it? Let me know in the comments. Next up, the Dermatology Daydream SPF 40. This is a 100% mineral sunscreen. The cast gonna cast on it. Like you, you gonna see that cast. However, it's not the worst cast I've ever seen. You know, that's it. I still wouldn't like say like, yeah, go out and get it. But you know, I just gotta give it its, it's a little props. It's not the worst cast I've ever seen. If you must wear this one, some makeup should help. Some powder, maybe a full face and a prayer. You know, that, that could kind of bring down the, the cast a little bit. But with these mineral sunscreens, with that zinc oxide and then that titanium dioxide, you may, I'd be telling y'all no flash photos. You take a photo with the flash, it, it might tell on you. You know what I'm saying? But the texture on this one is thick and creamy, but doesn't feel heavy on the skin. And this, like the good molecules, does leave like a balmy touch on the skin that I don't like that. Would you try this? Have you tried this? Let me know in the comments. Next up, the Kosas Dream Beam Silicone Free Mineral sunscreen SPF 40 with ceramides and peptides and you know I guess you know we had to say like at least it has ceramides and peptides in it because lord this was a beige ass mess <laughs> now in its defense it does kind of market itself as a makeup primer so uh does it market itself as a makeup primer? I mean, it kind of does. Well, it says you could wear alone or as the perfect base. Okay, okay, I gotta change this up now because it says wear alone or as the perfect base for makeup because I think it said it's a perfect base for makeup alone on um, the Sephora site. Yeah, like you, you gonna need some makeup with this because this was trying really hard to be like really nice and glowy and luminous. However, something glowy and luminous and beige on darker skin, mmm. Now, if you have lighter skin, you know, maybe it's a win for you. But if you have darker skin, I listen, if you're looking for something that's kind of like a combo where you have the iron oxides, so it's tinted, and then you have the mineral UV filter, and then you have like a little bit of like makeup in it, something far better than this stuff. <laughs> I would say the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint is something extremely beautiful if you can find your shade. They do have a decent shade range and because it is something that's really sheer, a couple of different complexions might be able to wear one shade and you know get away with it because it, you know, like I said, it has sheer coverage. Another one that I like is the Tower 28. I reviewed that in the last sunscreen video that I did. That's also a really like a chef's kiss, beautiful product that combines, you know, the makeup aspect the tinted aspect, the mineral sunscreen aspect, and it looks just beautiful on the skin. You know, however, with things like this, make sure you still put on enough, which is about a quarter teaspoon, which, you know, the actual formula is two milligrams of sunscreen per centimeter square of skin, because, you know, if you don't put on enough, you ain't gonna get the SPF that's listed on the label. So just, you know, remember that, you know what I'm saying? Now, next up, the Fenty Skin Hydrovisor Broad Spectrum SPF 15 Sunscreen Hand Cream. Now, when I saw that this was a mineral sunscreen hand cream, I was like, what in the ashy hand mess is Rihanna trying to have us on? But then when I saw that it was an SPF 15, I'm like, okay, maybe there's not that much of the zinc oxide in there. But this looks really good on the skin. It feels really nice. It has like a really nice silky texture to it. It smells amazing, at least to me. This does have really bad reviews on Sephora.com though, because this little itty bitty thing is $22. I bought it because I was intrigued and it was during the Sephora sale. And of course, you know, a lot of times when I buy stuff for, you know, to review, I can write it on my taxes as a business expense. But I, I like this. I don't, would I buy it again at $22? I don't know. It's nice. Now, one thing I will say about Fenty Skin, I wasn't a huge fan of the facial skincare stuff. However, that body skincare so far, I am loving. There's a body butter, the one that comes in like the light purple container. I really like that. There's that cocoa soap, body soap. I bought two of them so far. Then I bought three re-ups during the Sephora sale. I like this. I don't know if I'm gonna rebuy it because it's $22 for a hand cream, but 
I'm liking what Fenty's doing with body skincare. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, would you buy this? <laughs> would you try this? Have you tried this? Let me know in the comments. I actually almost forgot it, which would have been a shame because this is a really nice sunscreen. This is the Bolden Brightening Moisturizer SPF 30 with vitamin C. So this comes from a black owned brand. The filters in it, homosalate, octosalate, avabenzone, and octocrylene. So this uses a vitamin C derivative to help with brightening the skin and helping with discoloration. Now, now, potentially you could have three steps rolled into one with this one product, your treatment, your moisturizer, and your sun protection. However, for a lot of people with discoloration, you're probably gonna need an additional targeted treatment for discoloration. You can find out more in the hyperpigmentation playlist on this channel about that. This sunscreen is lightweight, yet very hydrating. What I love most about it is that it sinks into the skin, so there's no greasy residue on there. The skin just feels really nice. Again, I have oily skin. I can see myself being able to wear this also in the warmer month. Although on makeup days, I might need to tweak things if I'm trying to get that makeup to last all day. But however, this is a nice product. Let me know if you've tried it or if you would try it. Let me know in the comments. Another one. Hold up. Wait a minute. I bet you thought I was through. <laughs> but I had to include this because I could already see y'all just typing. Just typing like, oh, what about the Penta Mineral Sunscreen, Danielle? And I don't know when next I'm gonna do another sunscreen video. So even though this dropped after I had already sent the clips of the video to my editor, I was like, oh no, I gotta add this in there. So this is the Fenty Skin Hydrovisor Mineral Sunscreen SPF 30. And the UV filter in here is zinc oxide. And this is definitely gonna be added to my list of mineral sunscreens that look great on deeper skin tones, which is a blog post that I will leave linked in the description. I update it every time I do one of these videos, you know, when I come across a mineral sunscreen that looks okay on deeper skin. Now let's talk about it. Now the fragrance on here is pretty strong. However, I happen to actually really like the fragrance that they used in this, so it didn't bother me any. As a matter of fact, it's the same fragrance that they use in the sunscreen hand cream, so that was a nice delight. Hey y'all, quick note. So I just saw on the Fenty Beauty website that you can decide to go fragrance-free with this mineral sunscreen but you can only do it at FentyBeauty.com. I will leave the link in the description. This one ounce was $25. The 1.7 ounce is $39. So pretty, you, you dish out some coins for this one. However, you would be hard pressed to clock a visible cast using this sunscreen. Like you really have to like zoom in, get your glass eye, get your monocle, get your binoculars, get all of that. Call NASA telling that you did you go need a telescope to clock a cast with this mineral sunscreen. However, though, don't mess with the flash photography because you know flash photography once the zinc and the flash hit, like it, it can be a little tragic here. But it is very hard to clock a cast with this. That doesn't necessarily mean I just sang its praises. Then that doesn't necessarily mean that nobody's ever gonna see a cast because sometimes it does depend on what you use before, how you apply it. I like to apply my mineral sunscreens in thin layers until I have the adequate amount on my face, neck, and ears. However, with this one, I could just go right in and just, I mean, I did do layers, but I didn't have to do the most to get this to blend into my skin. Finish wise, I would say that you'll get like a natural finish. When I initially tried it, I thought like, ooh, this is a little too dewy. However, it does dry down to a natural, I wouldn't say that it's completely matte, but it's like that natural matte, like kind of like veering towards matte, but still maybe on the natural side, but definitely not, you know, completely dewy. And we're in May, so it's a little warmer out, but you know, not completely hot. I would say that this would be pretty decent for oily skin in the summertime, but it depends on how hot it's gonna get. So anyway, <laughs> that's my scoop on this. Rihanna, you know, you did your thing here. I'm saying that like as if she's watching my video, right? Like. Are you watching my video, Rihanna? <laughs> anyway, would you try this? Have you tried this? Let me know in the comments. Now, if you was like, all right, I'm cool with this roundup of sunscreens, but I would like to see more, I got you. Coming up next is my last roundup on sunscreen videos. Check that out and I'll see you in it.